I actually have to look at Goodreads to remind me what I read this month because I can't remember. July was a super crazy month. Do I say that about every month? Yes, probably I do. That's okay. Despite that, I actually read a lot of books in July and I really think that my no TBR method is the best method for me because I felt like I got a lot more enjoyment out of the books I was reading and I felt more compelled to finish them in a timely manner. So aside from any read-alongs or other buddy reads, I will probably just read whatever catches my fancy and uh, we'll see how it goes. By the way, I'll have reviews for most of the books that I read coming up, so if you want to hear more about them, stay tuned. I will give kind of a brief idea of what I thought of it and my review will be more in-depth. The first book that I read in July was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I really enjoyed it. It was kind of an interesting experience for me because I had started it before and I couldn't get through it. And something I didn't even mention in my review of the book, which you can um, see, I'll link below, uh, was that it talks a lot about art and actually talks about graphic novels, which is really interesting. So I didn't mention that at all in my review, but it's a major part of the novel. So it's, I think it's a really cool read, uh, very hyped, but if you are into post-apocalyptic fiction, um, maybe on the more literary fiction side, you should check it out. It is quite interesting. The next book I finished in the month of July was The Buried Pyramid, and this was more of a didn't really finish it, but I put it down and I stopped. Um, I do hope to finish it someday soon. As you know, in June I had a read-along for it. It's one of my old favorites, but I had some problems with it and I had trouble getting into it, so I stopped reading it because I've already read it before. Um, I will have a video talking about that very soon, as soon as I can film it. So look forward to that if you're interested, if you have any experiences reading uh, old favorites and finding problems with them, you will be interested in that, so stay tuned for that. The next book I finished I already have a review up for also. It was The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, um, a big recommendation from Max at Well Read Books, and uh, I actually met Max at VidCon, and it was amazing. He's wonderful. As I've said before, I definitely trust his opinions in books, and I loved The Shadow of the Wind. It was kind of long, and there's kind of a drawn out part in the middle, but overall, uh, a fun read and a serious read, actually, which I didn't expect. Be sure to give that one a shot if you're interested in something. It's not magical, but it is. it just feels like it. It definitely has the vibe of a magical book, um, and I think maybe that's just the way that Carlos Ruiz Zafon writes. He has a very, like, beautiful style and everything you know, every building, every item kind of has something special going on with it, and I mean, it's just wonderful. The next book I finished, which I hope to review very soon, is Who Fears Death by Nnedi Okorafor. This is sort of a futuristic, post-apocalyptic book, and there's a little bit of fantasy in there, there's magic involved, and I think that it's really interesting because there's a lot of blurred lines between what is real and what isn't real or what was real and wasn't real in terms of the past in the story. It actually takes place in Sudan, so that's unique. To be honest, for a lot of the book I didn't realize that it was actually um, post-apocalyptic, but I did. It was weird and I didn't really know what the time frame was, and I think that really kind of heightened my enjoyment of the book because I was kind of confused, so I won't give any details about exactly when it takes place or what's going on. I do think it was definitely a unique book to read, so many interesting things to talk about, so I'm gonna stop now, I'm gonna shut up and just say good book. The next book I finished um, on my way to VidCon. This is actually the benefit of being on planes a lot. I read the whole time. So I finished Phyllida by Andre Brink and I'm still kind of sorting out my feelings on the book. If you remember, it's a book about a slave in South Africa right around the time when the slaves are freed. The final book I read this month was A Small Place by Jamaica Kincaid. I got it at the VidCon book swap that Christina Horner organized and it was... I mean, 
I have never read anything by Jamaica Kincaid before, but now I want to read everything. It was sort of like she put into words some thoughts I had had about being a tourist, which is interesting because A Small Place really talks about tourism in Antigua and how that affects the, um, the people who live there and how it's changed over the years. Um, and you know, just how how tourists are perceived and how they perceive themselves, kind of like a mishmash of a lot of things. If you travel a lot, you probably already have these ideas and thoughts and understandings about kind of uh, cultural colonialism and things like that. It's complicated. It was um, also a very informative read, something that I learned a lot from, and I will definitely be reading more of Jamaica Kincaid's work. So it's kind of amazing if you think about my last wrap up versus this one, and I guess that's just life. You know, sometimes we read a lot, sometimes we don't. Um, but I had a lot of fun reading this month, and I felt kind of like revitalized and excited about the books I was reading and excited about the things that I was learning. And so I hope that this continues. What did you read this month? And what are you hoping to read next month if you have any plans? I would love to know. And if you have any recommendations based off of the books that I mentioned here, please let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye.